everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we're making this adorable bows and bells napkin ring. This is so cute and dainty. Just a cute little um, embellishment and detail for your dinner table for the holiday season. It's just a cute little detail and those, those little details really uh, strike everyone um, at the dinner table and you can make as many of these as you want uh, for your dinner. Um, and uh, I'm just going to show you how to make one but you can make as many of these as you want so I am going to get into the supplies and then we can get into making this cute little piece so what we need is um, the yarn obviously I'm using red heart super saver yarn this is a worsted weight yarn uh, it is uh, sort of thin you want to use a, a thinner yarn uh, you could actually use a double knitting yarn or Possibly an Aran yarn would actually work totally fine as well, but this is a worsted weight. It's a just a thin yarn. It's a polyester yarn. You can use any acrylic, any polyester, any cotton yarn you want, and you can use any colors you want. I'm just using green and red for the holiday season, but you can use any colors. And then uh, I'm embellishing this with a little bell here. Uh, this, these are jingle bells. Um, I do recommend though having, um, if, if you're using these on, obviously under the age of thir three, you want to keep these away from children. But I have these jingle bells I got from the craft shop. These are 20 millimeters but you can use any size bell or any embellishment. You can add uh, beads or buttons or something, just some extra embellishment, but a jingle bell is a fun um, thing for the holidays as well. And then the size hooks we are going to use for our main part for the ring, uh, this part here, I'm using an E hook, which is three and a half millimeters. Okay, as you can see there, you can use an F hook or even go up to a G hook, which is the other hook I'm going to be using for the bow portion of this. We are using the G6 hook, which is 4.25 millimeters. But if you have a G, which is a four millimeter hook, you can use that or even go up to an H hook. But just know the bigger hook you use, the bigger the bow you're going to have. So if you like the big bows, then definitely use a bigger hook. And then uh, on the inside of this ring, here. I used a tissue paper roll. So um, I this one's all cut up, but um, you can use any cardboard roll that is available or you don't have to use this at all. But uh, it just helps to keep the round shape inside and that way your um, little napkin ring will stay in the round shape and won't be flimsy or anything and it will keep your napkin all nice and tidy. So uh, I'm using, you're gonna, we're gonna be cutting this in little strips and then making that. So just a little piece of cardboard, round cardboard is helpful. You're also going to need a scissors and a yarn needle to cut your yarn and sew in a lot of ends. There's a lot of sewing involved in this actually um, because we're making this a rectangle piece and then sewing it closed around the cardboard and then we're sewing this um, little bow onto this backing and then we're sewing the bell on as well. So it's a, a lot of sewing in this project but it is really fast and it worked up so nicely for me so I hope you like it as well. Um, now before we begin I have to mention there are links in the description of this video so there's a link to the written pattern for this. It is so ridiculously easy but there's also photos on the blog too um, so you can get all the pattern and everything for this. And uh, you can make as many of these as you want, so that's really fun. Also, there's a link to my Facebook and Instagram, so if you sh if you make this, make sure to share your photos on the wall on Facebook, and then on Instagram, be sure to hashtag Yarn Utopia so I can see your cute little bow napkin rings. And then also, uh, you can follow me on Snapchat. Let me know what you're you know what's on your hook today, hot off the hook, or if you're working on a project, Snapchat me. I am Yarn Utopia on Snapchat, so make sure you snap me, follow me there, and you can see behind the scenes clips of what we do here at Yarn Utopia headquarters. And lastly, before we get started, I have to say a big thank you to my dad, Fouad Asmat, for taking the time to make this, with this video with us. He's our videographer, editor, and photographer for all of our videos. So make sure you hit that red subscribe button. And if you could support us, and we could, you can click that um, eye in the corner here and support us so we can keep bringing you these crochet tutorials. So now let's get started and make this bows and bells napkin ring. All right, we're gonna start out with our uh, tissue roll if you are going to use one. You don't have to use one, but it kind of helps with the inside of the uh, napkin cover um, thing. So what we're going to do is take that, I'm gonna measure out how big I want it to be. 
probably just like a centimeter okay right about there and then what we're going to do is fold this in half and then cut it straight across okay and you can make yours as wide as you want it to be but this is um, basically the ins what's going to be inside of the napkin ring so you can cut as many as you want the same size okay so you can just like put this over the top of the next part and just ooh, <laughs> be careful with it but cut then along and use it as a guide to make as many of these rings as you want and then uh, we are going to um, get our yarn and our E hook which is three and a half millimeters and I'm gonna use green for my main color here and we're going to make a slip knot so put your short end over the long end and then fold this down and then pull that through and pull tight insert your hook just like that so now I am going to chain nine you can chain however big this is of yours chain as much as you need to to wrap around this whole thing okay so I'm gonna show you here I'm gonna chain nine so yarn over and pull through one yarn over pull through two three four five six seven eight and nine okay and then I'm going to pull this out just a little bit and remove my hook I'm gonna grab this and put this in the inside okay just like that around this piece okay and I'm going to measure and make sure that this fits around and it does Okay, it's actually a little bit big, but that's okay. That the, There's a little bit of extra room in there. Just make sure that it fits inside. You can even chain less if you want to. But just make sure that it fits all the way around uh, this piece, and then we can remove it, and we can go on to making this um, now all the way around. So what we're going to do is make this in rows. So in the second chain from the hook and across, we are going to single crochet. So the loop on the hook doesn't count. So count one and two right in here. And I'm going to turn my chain toward me. So I'm gonna turn it toward me like this and I'm gonna work in this back ridge right here. So I'm gonna go into that second chain from the hook, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops for a single crochet. Okay, and we're just going to single crochet in each chain across. So go into the next one, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, and just single crochet across. So since I chained nine, I will have eight single crochets across for row one. Okay, now depending if yours is uh, your uh, little tissued um, cardboard piece is bigger like thicker than mine you will have to chain more but we're just single crocheting across our foundation chain just like this and then we're just going to single crochet a big like rectangle piece oopsie here's my last stitch here so if you need to if you're doing it exactly like me so my little piece here is about a centimeter in width and then, so this would have to be about two centimeters since we're going to fold it in half and it's going to fit around the piece. Okay, so you can see here, I'll just insert it in there. And then it's going to wrap around it like that. Okay, so that's what it's going to be like. So now going on to row two uh, through, my, mine's going to be 30 rows. So two through 30, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and single crochet into this first stitch right here and in each stitch across. So just single crocheting. Okay, and that's all we're going to do. Chain one, turn your work, and single crochet across. And I'm gonna do 30 rows in total. Uh, if your tissue ring, if this ring of yours is bigger or smaller, uh, you'll obviously have to uh, make more rows to fit around this whole thing. But um, I'm gonna do that all the way until I do 30 rows. It's a very basic repeat pattern, just single crocheting across, then chain one, turn your work around, and single crochet across. 
Okay, make sure every row has the same amount of stitches. It's going to be easy since I only have eight stitches. It'll be really easy to count every row unless, you know, like a blanket has like 200 and some stitches in every row. So you don't have to count that many. So uh, it's just eight stitches across here and then chain one, turn your work and single crochet eight across. So I'm going to do 30 rows in total. Like I said, though, you can do yours more or less. Um, depending on how big your ring is or how big you want yours to fit around a napkin and then I will meet you up and we'll go on to the next step together. Alright, so I'm just finishing row 30 here. So this is what it should look like. I just turned my work single crocheted across and made this piece, chain of one, turn the work, etc. So now I'm going to pull this up here and we want to make sure that this fits all the way around uh, this ring. Okay, so we're going to wrap it all the way around and sure enough it fits. It's actually a little bit big for this ring so that's okay. Um, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to actually fasten this off if it's just a hair bigger, that's okay. Um, if you want to, you can do like 25 rows of this and it is quite stretchy anyway, so you can stop at that point. Whatever you feel most comfortable doing. So to fasten off, we're gonna chain one. We're gonna cut our yarn really long, okay? And then we're gonna continue to pull it through because the length of this little this straggler here, this loose end that we keep pulling through, we're gonna use it for sewing. We're gonna whip stitch this closed around our tissue paper ring. So let's get this untangled here and get a move on. There we go, okay. There we go, so it's all fastened off, pulled tight, and there you have this piece. So now what we're going to do is take our ring and we are going to wrap this kind of like this around the ring. Okay. You need to grab your yarn needle and the end of this piece. Okay. We're going to yarn our needle with this. Just sew this long strand. Okay. And then we're going to whip stitch this around. So I'm going in from the inside to the outside to make sure your yarn does not get um, tangled at all. So I'm just going in from the inside to the outside. And then once I whip stitch this all closed, I am going to kind of maneuver this in the inside of the ring so that you won't see the seam at all which will be nice. But it's easy just to do it from on one end just like this so that you can easily sew it closed. So I'm just going to whip stitch this just like this all the way around. Okay, you'll have to have a little bit of coordination, but that's okay. You can do it. And this is, oh, easy. <laughs> you have to make sure that you, um, you know, obviously have to keep your yarn untangled and everything. So I'm going to untangle this yarn and whip stitch this closed. There we go. And then I'll meet you up um, when I come back around. I'll show you how to fasten this off and then we can add the bow. All right, so I just sewed this all the way around. Now you can see here, this is where it should connect. So now we have to sew this closed, uh, making sure that this uh, little cardboard piece is all hidden inside. So I'm just gonna whip stitch that around also. So we're just gonna go into the stitches now and work up the seam just like that. Okay, and there's only gonna be eight of these stitches, so you can watch me do this all the way around here. Okay, and if you want to, you can see here my kind of ugly seam here. We can kind of maneuver this piece so that that seam goes into the inside of the napkin ring. Okay, so I'm kind of just kind of rolling it to the inside, flat part. Okay, so now it's like seamless almost. I mean, you can't really see the seam inside, but it's 
along the inside of the ring now. Can't really see it even at all. So there. So now I'm just going to continue closing this little part here. Okay, so I'm just going to whip stitch this part closed. And then when you're ready to fasten this part off, when it's all closed, okay, so it's all completely closed up, we can tie it in a knot here. Oops, I have one stitch left. Okay, and you can really maneuver this however you need to. It's really easy to move around, but we're going to just go into a couple stitches. Okay, I'm going to keep my thumb in this loop here. Okay, just like that. Then I'm going to come back around into that loop and then pull that tight. And that really cinches it tight. So you can do that a couple of times, going into a couple of stitches, pulling that loop around your finger like that, then going back around into that loop and then pulling tight. Okay, and then to sew this in, since this is um, going to be hidden inside, we can just go into the ring on the inside. Okay, and just hide that end. Let's see, underneath these stitches. Okay, and once that's secure in there, you can cut any extra and it's all hidden. So there you have a nice little plain um, napkin ring. If you want to, you can end here and just have cute little, you know, if you wanted to make this striped or if you wanted to just make these solid, this is a nice napkin ring, but I want to embell embellish this a little bit. So I'm gonna, uh, you can make as many of these as you need to. A nice place setting um, for the dinner table would be four or six or eight of these uh, if you have guests over. Um, so. You can make a bunch of these and then come back and we will make the embellishment. All right, so I'm gonna set my napkin ring aside and I have some red yarn. We're going to make a bow. So we're going to start off with a slip knot. So put your short end over that long end, then fold that down and pull the long end through and pull tight. Insert your hook and we can start. So I'm gonna use the G6 hook where uh, the two point, or I'm sorry, the 4.25 millimeter hook. You can use any size hook you want for this part, um, but I'm going to start off by chaining 20. So yarn over, pull through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, okay? And then what I'm going to do is take this chain without twisting it and kind of flip it over so that this first chain gets to my hook right here. And then I'm gonna go into the back ridge of that chain, that first chain there, and I'm going to put a single crochet into there. So I'm gonna go into the first chain, and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, that's a single crochet. And now I'm going to single crochet into each chain, making sure not to twist the chain at all. We're just going to single crochet into each chain around. So now we've made a continuous loop and I'm just going to work single crochets in each chain around. So there'll be just, uh, 20 single crochets. So I'm just gonna do that and then I will meet you up for round two. When you make it all the way back around, this is what it should look like. Uh, make sure not to twist your uh, foundation here because mine kind of twisted like this. So make sure that it all looks straight all the way around and looks really good. And now we can continue on with rounds two through five. We are working a single crochet into each stitch around. But instead of going through both loops like this, okay, we go through just the back loop only. Okay, so we're gonna go into this first stitch right here, back loop only. If you want to, to mark your front first stitches, uh, you can put a stitch marker in here, but this little straggler here kind of marks where my beginning is, and I'm just gonna count 20 every round, because there's only five rounds. So rounds two through five, we're just working in the back loops only, and working a single crochet in each stitch around, just like this, okay? And I'm going to count, there's 20 stitches on each round, 
and once I finish round five, uh, you'll see that it is starting, it will start to make like a little tube kind of looking thing. It won't look like a bow yet. Uh, but when we get uh, finished with round five, I'll meet you up and then we will go on to the next step of making the bow shape. When you finish round five, this is what it should look like. So you can see here one, two, three, four, and five rounds. And working in the back loop gives it a nice little ribbed effect. Um, you don't have to work in the back loops only, but I did just to give it a little bit of more of a little detail. So now to fasten this part off, we are going to go underneath both loops of this next stitch and then yarn over and pull through and through for a slip stitch. And then to fasten off, I like to chain one, cut the yarn quite long, and then to continue to pull this all the way through. And we're gonna use this uh, long strand for sewing later. So this is what it should look like, just a little tube looking thing so far, okay? I'm gonna set this aside. We are going to make the little strands that come down the bow and then we're, we're gonna wrap this all together. So grab some more uh, red yarn. Okay, it has to be the same color as the bow. And with that same size hook, we are going to make another slip knot, okay? And then we're going to chain 15. So yarn over and pull through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then we're going to half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. So yarn over, go in the second chain. So one, two, right in there, second chain from the hook, yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Okay, that's a half double crochet. We're gonna half double crochet into the next five chains. So yarn over, go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Again, yarn over, go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Okay, that's two, this is three, here's four, and five, okay? Now we're going to half double crochet three together. So yarn over, go into the next chain, yarn over and pull through, hold it. We're gonna go into the next chain, okay? Then yarn over and pull through, and then go into the next chain and yarn over and pull through. So now we have five loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all five of those loops, just like that. And then we're going to half double crochet in the rest of the chains on this foundation here. So there should be six here. One, or I'm sorry, five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so there should be five there. Then what we're going to do is chain one and slip stitch down into the same, this last chain here. So go in, yarn over, pull through and through. And then to fasten off, I like to chain one and grab the scissors to cut the yarn and pull that all the way through and pull it tight. Okay, so this is what it should sort of look like. Okay, just like that, like an upside down V. Okay, and then what we're going to do is take our piece, make sure that your uh, beginning and end are centered in the back here. Okay, so this is your beginning. You can kind of take that little straggler, that short straggler, and put it to the inside of this uh, bow here. Okay, and you can kind of see this is going to squish down in the center here and make the bow shape. So what we're going to do now, make sure that this is the front Okay, looking at the front there, I'm gonna cut this little straggler just a little shorter. Okay, so that's what it should look like. And then you can fold this, kind of pinch it in the middle, okay, kind of shape it a little bit. And you can wrap this long strand about like once around here. I'm gonna go back around there. Okay, just once, just to kind of hold it in place. Okay, and then we're going to put this piece in the back, okay, underneath the bow, just like that. And then wrap this long strand around your bow as many times as you want to make your middle look fabulous. 
Okay, so I'm just going to wrap and wrap and wrap. Probably, oh, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 times. Okay, and obviously you want to make sure uh, your piece looks good, so you want to um, just maneuver around your yarn, kind of manipulate your yarn to make sure that this is in the center and everything looks good. Okay, I'm just going to continue wrapping and wrapping. And you know, your bow in the middle can have a lot of yarn wrapped or just a little bit of yarn wrapped. I like a lot of yarn wrapped. Makes a nice chunky bow. Okay, you can stretch it out. Just like that. Okay, so once your piece looks like the way you want it to, okay, we're going to take that long strand that we were wrapping with and we are going to yarn our yarn needle with that. Okay. And we're going to tie some knots in the back so that this secures everything down. So then turn this around and just go from one side of the wrapping to the other. Okay. And without tangling anything, make sure you pull that tight. Okay. And then just wrap it a few times in there, just like that, just to secure it. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, then you can stretch these out a little bit. Okay, there's your bow so far. So now we have to sew this onto our piece here. Okay, so make sure you just uh, make it look good. And then you can go underneath a few of the stitches on your napkin ring. Okay, this part doesn't really need a whole lot of explaining. It's kind of self-explanatory. Just sew this onto your piece. And just do it like that. Okay, make sure it's secure and tight. Okay, and you can do that a few times, you know, two, three times. Okay, and then to tie a knot, we're going to go underneath this piece. Okay, hold that loop right there. Okay, kind of pull it tighter, I guess. Okay. You have that loop there. We're going to go into that loop and tie off a knot. Okay, and you can tie a couple knots if you want to, um, two or three knots. I'm going to cut this a little shorter because my yarn is kind of long. Okay, just to tie some knots in there. Okay, and then to sew in this end, I'm just going to go underneath into the napkin ring itself and hide this on the inside. Okay, and then cut that. Stretch it out. Make sure it's all hidden. Okay. And then I have to sew in these two loose ends here. And then we just have to add the bell. So again, it's very, um, it doesn't need a whole lot of explaining. Just to, I, get, I get a lot of questions though on how to sew in ends. So this is kind of how I do it. I just go underneath some of these stitches. Okay, with my yarn needle. And it gets a little difficult, but not bad. There we go. And then just stretch it out. And then just cut any extra. Okay. There. And then we have to add a bell. So I have these jingle bells here. 
going to add one of the gold ones. You can get Jingle Bells um, at your craft shop. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just grab um, some red yarn. You can sew it on with thread or you can use the red yarn of the bow. Totally up to you. Okay. And then I'm just going to go into the bow from one side and then into the bell packing and then back into the bow. Okay. And then just pull that tight. Make sure it's all in there. There we go. And then underneath here, we can tie a knot in the back. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this short here, but we'll sew in these ends. So I'll grab the yarn needle again. That's just the thing, we're just doing a lot of sewing at this point once everything is crocheted. Whoops. And on camera, of course, that would happen is that I'm not able to yarn my needle. There's one. Shoot. Well, we're going to just sew in these ends here. So we're going to go underneath our work. Okay, and you don't have to sew in it a lot just a little bit there and then just cut anything extra and it'll be hidden in the back okay I'll try to do this one also underneath everything behind the bow okay and just cut any extra Okay, and then just maneuver everything to make the bow look good on there. And the strands. And there it is. So all you just need to do is grab a napkin and you're done. So thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this cute piece. You know, you could make just the bow itself and not have to put it on um, a napkin ring. You can put it on something else, cute little hat or something. And uh, you could use this uh, napkin ring. You can make these striped if you wanted to or make different uh, colors. You don't have to add a, b a bell. You could add beads or buttons or something or different embellishment. Um, but this is just what I made. So thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this. Make sure to share your photos on Facebook and on Instagram and uh, hashtag yarn utopia. If you learned something today and made this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. But until next time, happy hooking!